Hi guys, so let's have a look at creating a book cover in Affinity Photo on the Windows PC. Not the Mac, not the iPad, just the Windows PC. Now isn't that a nice cover? And you can see it's it's got a few very fine uh, design details to it. Now I'm sure you'll really appreciate how to do this. No messing around with KDP, none of that other stuff, just designing a book cover that you can use. So let's go right into it. Now the book cover project details. This cover is based on a set print size but of course books come in many sizes. If yours is different you'll just have to adjust the size that's used in this exercise to suit your book. Example files used in this video can be found at that following address. My download site Create your book cover in Affinity Photo on Windows PC and iPad version. Now there's a mouthful for you. You might have to pause it there while you write that down. However, you'll also find it in the description which follows this video. Now, part one is the document setup. Set up the document for professional printing of a paperback cover. Front cover size is 5.25 by 8 inches. That's the trim size, the width and height. That's the book when it's finished and it's sitting on a shelf. That'll be its size. So we can start with the letter press ready preset. So go into the press ready preset column and look for the letter option. Why letter? Because particularly it's nearly that size and it's already in inches. Select file and new. The document type of print press ready and select CMYK, Units of Inches and Portrait Orientation. But wait, the page dimensions here are not 5.25 inches by 8 inches. That's the trim size. We want a, a full cover with spine. So how do we do this? The paper height includes the margin settings for top and bottom. So that's 2 by 0 0.12 inches and the page width is also greater to take in the front and back cover plus left and right margin settings of 2 by 0 0.12 and in addition you need to add 0 0.77 to account for the spine width. So in this case I've calculated a spine width of 0.77. That's one measurement you will need to change to suit your book's page numbers. Covered in other videos and in a thousand places on the internet. How to calculate your page numbers. Although if you've got a Word document that your book's done in and, your, and Word says it's 344 pages, add 10 pages to that because you've got front matter and back matter to take care of. That is, you know, um, this book is dedicated to a couple of pages of chapters if you're using them, bibliographies, um, information about the author and where you can buy the book and so on. That can add up to about another 8 to 10 pages. So just take that into account when you're calculating your spine width. It's a really easy thing to do and there's lots of places out there. So instead of 0 0.77 inches you just add in whatever it should be just there. Now the margins here act as non-printing bleed guides allowing your images to run over the margins to allow your printer to trim the covers. Remember the trim size of the book when it's folded, the spines showing on the shelf, your book size will be the trim size. So what does this look like? Here I've created a preset of the right dimensioned and named it custom book. So I've started with the letter size, 8 inches by 11 inches, but I want a, a different size. The page width is 11.51 inches. The page height is 8.24 inches. Now you'll see because I've changed those, the word custom appears next to the plus sign. We'll deal with that in a moment. Document units inches. Orientation is landscape. Image placement policy. Prefer linked. Well, you can link them or embed them. For a cover, it doesn't really make a lot of difference. The colour formats, CMYK. Now, include margins. I want to include margins in this all around the edges so that 
you can see where your where your working document is. So anything inside the margins is a safe area, shall we say. Now, I've named it a custom book. So click on the plus sign and it pops up create a, a preset and I renamed it by right clicking on it and rename custom book and it pops it into my presets. Everything else is the same and it's called custom book. Just a note here, you'll see under color that it's got a transparent background. Mm, you can probably not tick that, just leave it empty so it's a plain white background. There are some printing places that don't like transparencies and you may find that you've got to flatten the image once you've finished it to get rid of that transparent background. So deal with that one as a matter of course. Some people use it, some people don't. Now here I've created the cover document and as you can see it's got a transparent background. That, that hatching indicates to you that it's transparent. So open the guides manager. What we're going to do is put in some margins here. Some bleed lines. So guides manager and it comes up like that as you can see. Now to set up the bleeds you can see the margins of the inner, just behind that guides manager there, you can see the blue lines. Now the inner box, that's the margins. But the bleed lines and the spine lines are those ones that I've got there. Vertical guides set at those spaces. The horizontal guides and the vertical guides, the very edge ones, you can see 0 0.12 and 0 0.12, 8.12 and 11.39, they appear at the, at the edge. They'll appear outside the margins. Inside the margins is the safe area for text and graphics. So you can think of that when you're building it. Anything outside the bleeds, that's these guides, because you can't put bleeds in a affinity photo document. So you've got to build them yourself. So anything outside these horizontal guides and vertical guides, the bleed lines, will be cut off when the book is trimmed. Anything outside the margin lines may be cut off. So you can go anything inside the margins is the safe area. Put what you like inside the margins. Except for the spine. Now you've got to leave a small margin around the spine. You don't want the spine folding over onto the front or back covers, do you? Now, there's your bleed line set up and you can see the outside and the inside and the two spine lines. They determine the spine. Now, here I've changed the margin, the safe area colors, to red to distinguish them easily from the bleed, except for the two spine guides which remain blue. So anything outside the blue lines around the edge can be cut off and probably will be cut off because that's your trim size. You following me? Inside the red line, safe area. Put what you like in there and it'll be printed. And if you get it wrong on the spine, it'll be printed on the back and the spine and the front as well. So be careful with that. But that's not a big issue really. Just be careful. Now, fonts and images. Images are readily available from unsplash.com and fonts from fontsquirrel.com. The font I'm using here is Antonio. So if you want to use that one, download and install it. You should also find it in my download folder, I think. Now, background. This image is definitely in the download folder. Open the forest image supplied on my website and place it onto the background layer. If you place it, it creates a new layer. Don't just copy and paste it, just place the whole thing on there and you've got a new layer. Resize the image to just outside your bleed guides. Any image outside the blue guides will be trimmed off. So you can see that image goes right outside the blue lines. And it will be trimmed off, but that's okay because there's nothing important in there. Inside the red lines will definitely be printed. That's the safe area. 
that's your trim size. Now the image itself can be way outside actually because it won't matter and won't get included. You can see there the blue bounding bars with the dots. That's the full size image. Disappears off the bottom of the page there. But that's the only part of the image I want. You can shrink it, move it, reposition it to get the best that you want. And you can see there's the trunk of a tree right up the spine there which is just where I wanted that. Now let's dress this up a little bit. Now to add a linear gradient to make the sky appear darker. Add a new fill layer so you can re-edit the gradient if necessary. So go to layers, select new fill layer. Select the fill tool, that's the gradient tool, and drag a gradient down from centre top to centre bottom of the page. So you've selected fill and you've selected the type which is linear and linear from the top and you can see down to the bottom. There's a circle at the top and a circle at the bottom. Click the gradient circular nodes and the top one is set to 0% opacity. So the bar at the top, its opacity is 0%. Don't set it to no colour, that's not what you want. You're not setting a colour, you're setting it to zero opacity. Click the gradient circular node on the lower dot and set the lower one to black. You've got the left one there is clear, the bottom one there is right. And you can see where you set the colour. Just there, linear position, colour, stops, gradient, reverse, etc. Opacity 100%. So the left one zero, the right one is black 100%. Set the midpoint marker from 50% cent, 50 <laughs> down to about 70%. You want that, that black um, area slightly lower, towards the bottom. It's always darker in a forest towards the bottom. Set the layers panel blend mode to darken. Very nice. Very atmospheric. Next we need to add a person into the forest. Well, how do we get him in there? So you need to, into, and you can see I've got man.jpg listed there. Open up the man image from the download file. First, cut out the person from the person image using the selection brush tool. You can see the dotted crawling ants surrounding the man. So use the selection brush tool to outline the man and then simply cut him out. Control C. We'll do that or we'll edit and cut. Copy the man and create a new image from the clipboard. So go to new image from clipboard. This gives you a transparent background image. Just what you want. I've left this one a little indistinct and ragged around the edges. Export the image as a PNG to a suitable folder. Call it man image or something like that. Man.jpg. Really, too easy. Place the new image as a new layer, naming it person. And you can see where I've placed him in there. Center the person in the right hand panel. And that's where you remember the right hand panel is the front cover of your book. And he's not quite on the bottom, but low down. And that's nicely placed. Now in the FX panel, choose Outer Glow and set white as the color. Set the position and size of the man as shown. Now the opacity is 39%, radius 34.1 and intensity 83%. So far, the next step is to add some fog. You can use the white brush for this or a fog brush if you have one. They're widely available. Now check your layers. You've got man selection. You've got some fill and forest, JPG.
Let's add some fog to our scene. First add a pixel layer. Select the paintbrush tool and either use white or a fog brush. But I've just used white here. But the settings are shown. Use multiple brush strokes, not just one continuous brushing. Make sure the lower part of the person is covered by fog. And you can see the settings there, they're up the top. The width of the brush 600 pixels, so opacity is only 20%, the flow is 100% and the hardness again is only 25%. And you can brush in the fog there. And his legs are only just showing in the fog. And it's quite a lot brighter just there. And you'll see why in a moment. Let's cool down the whole scene to create the right mood. We need to think frosty evening or maybe a cold dawn. So add another pixel layer. Select the color panel and set a blue tone with CMYK 702700. Then flood fill the layer and set the blend mode to color. And you can see the whole image below and it's got a slightly blue tinge to it. Very cold. Now we add a flashlight beam. Add a pixel layer. This isn't really necessary, but it helps. And you can remove it later, which I do. You can see the pixel layer there. That I find that having a pixel layer there stops um, the mouse pointer from automatically selecting other elements on the page accidentally, which is a real pain. So if you've got that pixel layer there, you can you select your pen tool, Draw the shape of a light cone. Curve the edges out a little with the node tool and fill it with white. You can see that there, that's fairly straightforward. Duplicate this layer and hide the original. Apply a Gaussian blur of 20% to the beam. And you can see that second top layer has got FX on there. That's the Gaussian blur, and you can see the edges of it slightly blurry compared to the curve below it, which is turned off for the moment. Add a very small white ellipse to the man's hand to imply the torch itself. And when you look at that, you can see, oh yes, he's got a torch there. Make the underlying layer visible, and using the erase brush, Paint over the edges with a lower opacity. You can see that there. The edges have been slightly diffused because you're painting over it. And actually you can see in the mask where the paint's been applied. Now rotate this layer by about 4 degrees to give it a slight offset to add real for added realism. Now can I see that in there? Select both flashlight and layers and group them. With the group selected, add a mask layer. That's that group you just joined, the two flashlight beams. Using the erase brush, erase brush tool, paint on the selected mask layer to mask out the lower area of the beam so it appears to fade out. Lastly, apply a Gaussian blur of about 6 pixels to the actual torch. So it's not a bright white circle, it's actually a foggy circle like the torch in the man's hand would be, with the fog around and the low light. And check the layers panel there, and you can see how that's working. Now, setting the text. Text in your project can take two forms, artistic text or frame text. This makes the two types great for use in titling and secondly paragraph body text. So let's start with the title, Search the Woods. Choose the artistic text tool and type Search the Woods on the front page. Add a line break after the word search. In other words, press the edit key. The font I've used is Antonio Bold at 80 points and centered. 
colour, CMYK 089780, a kind of a thriller blood red colour. Now, the leading override is 80 points. That's easy enough to set. That's in your character panel from the character studio. Now the texture. From the file menu, select place and open texture.jpg in the download files and drag the cursor over the title text. On the layers panel, drag this texture layer halfway down on the title layer and set its blend mode to multiply. Now you can see that that's actually being masked by the search the wood. So the texture, which is a woody texture, appears to be in the text itself, which is just what you want. With the title so layer selected, tap FX again and enable inner shadow the radius of 3 pixels, opacity 100%, the blend mode normal and outer glow radius 100 pixels and intensity 60% blend mode normal again. And you can see you get that darker surface behind Search the Woods. That helps to focus that area of the image. Set the colour to white and then adjust CMYK 1815169 and you end up with that dark colour. Now, adding more text. For the author, Choose Artistic Text and enter the author name, Justin B. Laker. The font's Antonio, it's 34 point, it's bold and it's white. It appears to be underlined there in the image, but it shouldn't be. If it is underlined, then it's somehow defaulted to that. Just click it anyway and get rid of the underline. That's easy. It's not underlined. Now, the back cover text, heading, it's late November. Antonio 22 point bold and white. That's the book summary. Now use the frame text tool and Antonio 12 point regular white justified left, which is what I've got there. And I've just got place marker text, lorem ipsum uh, text in there. The original text is right at the front of this video, on the first frame you see almost. Now the spine text. Choose the Artistic Text Tool. Insert the title of the book and the author name using the same colours as the front cover text. Set text to 30 point and rotate it 90 degrees. Now there's an interesting thing you see. You've got Search the Woods, Justin B. Laker in the spine and it starts from the bottom and goes to the top. In some countries it starts at the top and heads towards the bottom. So depending on where you are, how you sort that out, that's entirely up to you. Aligning your text. Up till now all your text may not be perfectly centred. We can fix this by using snapping and the temporary use of a draw and rectangle. Turn on snapping. That's the magnet right at the top there on the top toolbar over towards the right. Draw a rectangle with no fill or stroke from the guide to margin, snapping to each. When you reposition your text, you'll find a green vertical line indicating that the text is aligned to that box you've just drawn. That makes it very easy to align your text on that page. Now, exporting for print. Select Export from the Document menu. Select PDF from the preset PDF X1A2003 and tap Export. Now, exporting for ebook cover. You can make another cover. You might want this as an ebook. A nice feature of Affinity Photo is the ability to create ebook covers directly from within the app by simply exporting just the front cover as a slice. 
Switch to ex export persona. That's that um, in the top bar there, the option just on the right there with the blue dot and the green and purple dot coming out from it like some sort of strange satellite. With the slice tool, drag a rectangular slice on the front cover that fits perfectly within the guidelines and the page margin. Turn off snapping to help. You don't want snapping on at this stage really, it'll try and push it all over the place. On the slices panel, choose an export preset of single JPEG high quality. On export options, change the pixel format to RGB. The slice size is 1574 by 2403.5 pixels. Convert it to RGB. This converts the slice, not the entire document. You may not want to do this, but if you do, just take care with it. You'll get there. To export three different size versions of your cover slice, select the three size options and the convert to RGB option. And you can see there's an, amp, an example. I've got slice one, background, and create your book cover. So there's three slices there. You'll probably name them a little more efficiently than I did. The sizes are suitable for most devices. Now, that's this exercise on the iPad complete. I hope you have learned enough to go right ahead and create your very own fantastic book cover. Now, you'll note I've got this on the iPad complete. This is the Windows PC, but it works equally well on the iPad, which is where I did this in the first place. But obviously, the controls and commands are in a different place on the iPad. <laughs> but either way, you can go right ahead and create your very own fantastic book cover. Now, the iPad version of the export persona does not behave like the desktop version at all. So be careful. Duplicate your master document and experiment. That's the exported ebook cover slice. I think that's all for now. Finally, thanks for watching this fun little exercise. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click on the thumbs up to give it a like, and if you tap on the bell, you'll be reminded of future videos when they appear on my channel.